have acquired so many books over the course of 2021. So I'm going to attempt to haul all of them today. <laughs> So hello, welcome to my book haul. There are going to be a large number of books in this haul. And the reason for that being is that my bookshelves need some reorganization. I've acquired a lot of things, so I'm gonna be doing a book haul first. Then I will be doing an unhaul and a reorganization to really get my books in tip top shape. I do not have a lot of book hauls on my channel. Like I usually just haul things in vlogs. The reason for that being like, Sometimes I don't like to face the reality of the amount of books that I buy. But I feel like it would be fun to kind of do like an end of the year haul and see uh, what I've gotten in over the past year and like seeing what I've read, of what I bought, which is probably a small percentage. But I digress. So yeah, before we begin, um, book collecting is a hobby of mine. So I feel no shame over the amount of books that I purchase because it's literally like the main focal point of my apartment. I love my books. I don't regret buying them. And I have been really trying to like restructure my book buying so that I'm really only buying the books that I'm like 100% excited for, um, know that I'm gonna love so that I'm curating a collection of books that are like 100% my faves. However, that being said, I love a lot of things. So that still means that I'm buying a lot of books because I give everything five stars. <laughs> There is one other haul on my channel from this year, and that was my birthday haul. So any of the books that are on there, I'm not going to talk about here. But I'm going to try and go, try and remember the things that I've acquired since the beginning of 2021. It's been a while. I obviously know the things that are in more recent memory, but yeah, and I'll talk about like if it's an arc or like how I acquired it or something like that. I'm going to try and go with the things that I got towards the beginning of the year. I also pulled my TBR car over from my bedroom, so I have all those books like available too. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is I got these two poetry books. I honestly, this one might have been acquired in 2020, I don't remember, but um, I got Break Your Glass Slippers and Shine Your Icy Crown by Amanda Lovelace. This is the You Are Your Own Fairy Tale series. And as you can see, I got these both from Target because I haven't taken off the stickers yet. I really want to get into poetry and um, these types of books like really call to me. And I just really know that like when I go to read this, also has like beautiful illustrations. Like I feel like I'm just gonna be able to like annotate the heck out of it with like my own thoughts. And I really just like love the vibes of this honestly and like the reason the main reason i picked this up is cinderella was always my favorite fairy tale growing up it was like my favorite movie i watched it like 50 times a day i would rewind it to my favorite parts and watch it again so like i just feel very connected to cinderella so when i saw this i'm like i feel like this is a sign to start reading poetry and then of course i had to get the follow-up when i saw it at target so i will be reading the series also as this video goes along i'm like forming a pile on the floor of all the books i need to haul for like the thumbnail it's just going to be a gigantic mess in my house so in 2021 was really the year that i got into reading fantasy romance and i've done some fantasy romance books that I want to read videos and I collaborated with some authors on that so I was sent some books and bought some of my own so let me show you all my fantasy romance books that I've acquired this year first we have Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford and this one is so pretty and I had to have it because it is inspired by Fanny the Opera and like it's not that long it's almost like a novella length like 200 or so pages so I'm really excited to read this and I mean I, I had to have it. Fan of the opera, fantasy romance. Have I read it yet? No. Then next, I was sent these by the author Elizabeth Briggs, which I've seen her having a lot of um, books around on TikTok. And this is her fantasy romance series, and it's about a princess who is forced to marry the rival wizard king. So we have Beauty in Darkness and Kiss of Snow. This one, I'm really excited to read someday and <laughs> that's Feather by Olivia Wildstein. The author is also like redoing these hardcovers as well to have something on like the naked hardbacks. So definitely check that out. It's on her Instagram. Um, this is a fantasy romance that centers around an angel. Um, oh, it's called Romeo and Juliet but with angels. And here is the art print that I was sent with it. So like, that's intriguing enough for me. Then next we have Gods and Monsters by Janie Marie. I actually saw this one and Becca in the books 
channel um, when she was doing her fantasy romance like shelf tour and I was like wow I need to own this and this is the back and this is about a woman who is actually a mother and a plague of all plagues begins these people that were like dismissed as legends become the saviors of the world so I mean literally this cover like hello <laughs> I really have to go through and read the stuff that's on my shelves is all I'm going to say. Next, because I really like Fortuna Swarm by KJ Sutton, I picked up Charlie Travesty, book one by Jesse Elliott and KJ Sutton. Um, and this is a bind up of all like the short stories because it's like a serial series where like they release short stories. Um, it's a bind up, but I'm very disappointed to learn that it's not going to be continuing. So I don't know if I'm going to end up reading this if it's not going to continue, but this is about a girl who finds out that she is a vampire and like she's been living in the above world and just has to go underground then here we have guild by raven kennedy this is a huge um book on tiktok and i mean look at it i this is definitely one of the fantasy romances that i really want to get to soon my copy is signed um and this is about a girl who is gold touched by king midas and she is like given everything she could ever wanted but she's really like trapped in the palace like she's kind of like you know kept captive by king midas and so i'm really interested to see where this goes like people say that this is really dark but really good and i have just been like so intrigued about it ever since i first saw it and got the copy from an author for the video that i did but also like as it's gotten more and more popular on tiktok like i really want to read it then here we have the bridge kingdom and the traitor queen both of which i have read and absolutely loved laura and all of her sisters are raised to be spies um, and like the perfect wife for this tyrant king of the bridge kingdom which controls all of the trade because if you can see underneath this one you can see the bridge kingdom like this is the bridge that like connects all the kingdoms so they like control the trade and so she basically goes and she has to get information on her new husband to bring down the empire but when she's there she realizes that things are maybe not as they have been told to her her whole life fantastic duology and the third one is coming soon and that one is going to focus on Lara's brother then next is the bargainer series by laura delasa which is a series i read on kindle and loved it so much that i got physical copies so we have raf sodic a strange hymn and dark harmony and this one focuses on kelly who is a siren and she basically makes a bunch of bargains with this fae known as the bargainer and she has this bracelet on her wrist that has like all these bargains that she owes him um but one day he just like disappears and she thinks she's never going to hear from him again but one day he calls in his bargains and the first bargain that he asks for first favor he asks for in return is a simple kiss and things go from there and like i would just consider this like a darker akotar type book which if you're a sucker for those kinds of books like me, you would probably enjoy the series. And the next fancy romance books that I have, I have Savage and the Swan by Ella Fields. And this is basically about a princess who's kind of like kept under wraps because she's the last in her line. So she's very coddled by her family. They don't want her to do anything in the upcoming war. And then we have the Wolf King that is their opposition. And basically she flees when she finds out she's going to be in arranged marriage with a human. She's fae. And she unwillingly flees into the arms of the Wolf King standalone fantasy romance and then here we have capture the crown by jennifer estep i was given this in a book box so i'm not entirely sure what this is about um but i know that it is like a follow-up to the kill the queen series so i think that there is like intertwined worlds going on here so i am very intrigued in reading this one but i want to read the other ones that come with it as well um, but just going off the back, she returns to her crown of shards world with an all-new trilogy and a bold new heroine who protects her kingdom from magic, murder, and mayhem by moonlighting as a spy. Sounds very fun. Now I'm going to go through some advanced copies that I've gotten. Um, we have A Spot of Trouble by Terry Wilson, and this is from Sourcebooks. And this is about a romance where these two Dalmatian owners basically get in a mix-up with the local firehouse and... It's just a cute little rom-com featuring these Dalmatians. And look at, I mean, I love puppies. Then we have What We Devour by Lindsay Miller. This is a dark YA fantasy. And it's about like this girl that has a power of two gods inside her. And she basically teams up with this like corrupted prince to bring mayhem. Um, I ended up this with like two stars. Like it wasn't exactly my cup of tea, but if you like, like dark gothic 
YA, like this is definitely one to consider. I'm probably gonna end up um, trading this arc at some point because you can't sell arc, so obviously I will probably trade it, but I read it. Then we have To Break a Covenant by Allison Ames, and I never ended up getting to this one, but it's a surreal and gritty supernatural thriller, perfect for fans of Wilder Girls and Sock Hill Girls. Um, and it involves like a mining explosion. So here it is. Then we have Forest Born by Elaine Audrey Becker. I wanted to love this one. I ended up DNFing it. I got like 50 pages in and I was just kind of bored. But that's not to say that I won't get back to it at some point. But this is about a girl that basically has like shifter magic. So she has three different forms that she can shift in. And she works with the royal family kind of after like fleeing from this forest that she comes from. In order to save her friend, the prince, she has to go into the forest and retrieve like this element that is the only thing that can cure the plague that is overtaking him. And then we also have an arc of the Splendor by Brina Shields, which is an enchanted hotel. Um, and Juliet is desperate to find out the truth after her sister comes back from a stay at this hotel and no longer loves her. So she goes to the hotel and see, sees what it's all about. And there's a bunch of illusions and different things going on. So now we have You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. And this is an arc that I got through a trade. So I just traded someone um, an arc that I had and they gave this to me. A girl who has like her boyfriend dies and it basically sh shakes up her whole life and then when she is desperate to hear his voice one more time she calls his cell phone just to listen to his voicemail and he picks up the phone so it sounds like a hard-hitting contemporary i don't read like a lot of YA contemporaries but this one like really intrigued me and seems like it's gonna be really sad then we have this book the midnight girls by alicia jacinka and this was sent to me by source and this is coming out in december so i'm gonna try and read it in december um and it's sapphic rival witches and it's polish based fantasy so very interested in this one these two are novellas that i was sent by tortine and we have a spindle splinter by alex e harrow which is a sapphic sleeping beauty retelling and we have in the watchful city by sq lu um which explores borders power diaspora and transformation in a mosaic novella that melds the futurism of Levine Theodora Central Station with the magical wonder of Catherine M. Valentin's Palpacet. And it's a sci-fi novella. Okay, so I got these two books because they were anticipated sequels to books I have read last year. And the first one being Bone Criers of Dawn by Catherine Purdy. And this is about the Bone Criers and they have to ferry in the souls of the dead. In order to come to your Bone Crier power, you have to lure your one true love to this bridge and then kill him. So this girl is doing her ritual and she lures this guy, but his dad was killed by Bone Crier, so he's out for revenge and then they are bound together. And they have to figure out a way out of it if they don't kill each other first. And here we have The Queen Will Betray You by Sarah Henning and this is a follow-up to The Princess Will Save You. And basically in this one we have like a badass girl with the cinnamon roll love interest and she, when he's captured because she's the princess um, and uses bargaining chip, like she has to go out of her way to save him. And so I love like the reverse of the damsel in distress trope and I mean this cover art is by Charlie Boder. It's absolutely gorgeous and I... Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to this one, maybe rereading the first one of both of these actually. Um, and yeah, these are just like the types of YA books that I adore. Here I have One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston. This is her new romance novel and it involves Jane who is on the subway and basically she's stuck in the 1970s. And we have cynical 23 year old August who just moved to New York City and she sees Jane on the train every day. There's chemistry between them, but she has to help Jane out of her time loop. I love Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinson, and I just know that I'm going to love this next one that she has. Here we have Too Good to Be Real by Melanie Johnson. This is a cute little rom-com about a writer who is struggling, and so she comes up with this idea to attend this resort where guests can live out their rom-com dreams. And so she goes to like do an article on this, but she meets a guy there that might actually make her rom-com dreams come true. This next series I purchased as a box set, and that is... The Kiss of Deception series. We have The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson, and um, The Beauty and Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. And I purchased these. They are the Remnant Chronicles um, because Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves is like the very popular follow up series to this and I do want to read all of them um and this is Keely's one of Keely's favorite fantasy series and I know if Keely's gonna like it I'm probably gonna like it and Keely doesn't like a lot of fantasy series so 
good I would give this one a go so this is about Leah and she flees on her wedding day and she is chased by her future husband um, as well as like an assassin that's out to get her and she sees these like two men on the road but she doesn't know which is which things go from there I mean it just sounds literally right up my alley and like I said Vow of the Dance of Thieves is like stupidly popular on TikTok so I can't read that without reading the beginning trilogy first because like I wouldn't be me if I didn't do that Next we have Legendborn by Tracy Dion and this is a King Arthur retelling where we follow Brie where she goes to a program at a college for bright um, high school students and then she witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus and so she joins a secret society of so-called Legendborn who hunt these creatures down. So she becomes one of the Legendborn. And I've heard that this was like absolutely fantastic by a lot of people that have read it. I mean, it has this super cool award here. So I want to read it. I mean, that's why I bought it. So here I was sent a bunch of historical um, romance novels from source book Casablanca. So they have like a really cool selection. This is The Duke Who Loved Me. Um, and this is A Proud Duke Meets His Match. Um, this is An Unexpected Earl. And this one is also Regency Romance. Um, he's determined to do right by the girl he left behind. This one is Paranormal Regency Romance, a wolf in Duke's clothing. So, werewolf shifter, Duke. You gotta say more. And all these on the side say like what it is, which I love. So then this one is The Princess Stakes by Emily Howard. Um, and this one's Historical Romance and it says there's tension brewing on the high seas. And then we have An Inconvenient Duke which is a Regency romance by Anna Harrington. So I was really excited when I got this package because I don't really have like any historical romances. Like I haven't started collecting them physically. I mostly read them on my Kindle. So it was really fun to get this unexpected package and now I have some to start off my collection with. I also have this arc here of The Lost Girls by Sonia Hartle and this is says, getting over your vampire ex is as easy as killing him and stealing his girlfriend. So it's like a 1980s inspired vampire revenge story so how i'm going to do the rest of this video is i'm going to pull some off of my tbr cart then i'm going to go through my shelves so those will be the ones that i've already read this year that i acquired um and then i'm going to go through the ones that i have sitting on my counter so i haven't even put away my tbr cart or my shelves so it is kind of a random order but the ones that come at the end of the video will be the ones that i've most recently acquired this is why Maybe doing monthly book calls would be better, but no, I just wait until the end of the year to do like 100 bucks at once, but that makes it more fun, you know? Okay, so in the Unplugged book box, I got The Ones We Were Meant to Find by Joan He, and this is a sci-fi where it's this girl wakes up on this island and has no memory of how she got there, but she knows that she's a sister, whereas like her sister is like wondering where her, you know, other sister has disappeared to. Very creepy and spooky, and... It just sounds like very intriguing. Then I have a bunch of books by Elise Kova because she just keeps releasing these books that sound right up my alley. So here we have A Deal with the Elf King, which is the Married to the Magic series. And like, if you take off the cover, she always has like the best cover art. And I had put this on my Romanticiathon TBR and never got to it. But the elves come for two things, war and wives. In both cases, they come for death. So Luella has been chosen by the elf king to be his wife, even though she thought she escaped that fate um, once she turned 19, because I think they can only choose you when you're 18. Um, however, because she is a healer in her village, she's brought back to help like heal the elf population. Then the next one from Elise Kova is A Dance with the Fey Prince. And so this is a girl who always has known that she would be in an arranged marriage. However, she doesn't know it's going to be to a prince. So things escalate from there. So pretty, pretty. Um, apparently she's writing another book in the series about a vampire. So stay tuned because I will be purchasing it. But yeah, I just absolutely love the cover art on this. And then she also had a YA book come out and Maddie loved it. So I'm like, oh, Maddie loves it. And like, it's beautiful. I'm a sucker for a beautiful book. So here we have A Trial of Sorcerers, book one. Um, yes, I love this naked design. And in this it says, ice is in her blood. And so we have Iria, Landon, and 
She's the most unwanted apprentice in the Tower of Sorcerers. And so the day she decides to step out and compete for a spot in the Tournament of Five Kingdoms. So a magical tournament. I mean, what more do you have to say? So I've mentioned a few times on my channel, but if you don't know, I recently switched jobs in July and I got a new job. So as a celebration of that new job, Keely sent me the Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. And I just like absolutely love the... Um, ombre color scheme going on in this one and Keely said it was one of her favorite reads of the year so I'm very excited for this one and it's about like girls if your blood is gilded then like you're outcasted um and so she has to join with the other gilded ones that have gold blood then this is an arc I was sent the secret bridesmaid by Katie Birchall and this is like a chick lit book but I really enjoyed it it's about this girl that is a bridesmaid for hire so in order to help them plan their wedding she is like becomes a bridesmaid in their wedding to help them like navigate the coming and goings of the weddings like from the inside and this was really fun and cute and basically like she is hired to be the bridesmaid to this like very unwilling heiress and it's just adorable and then here we have one that i randomly picked up at barnes noble one day because i was like that looks like a book i would like and this is bring me their hearts by sarah wolf this is like a ya fantasy romance zara is an immortal unaging soldier and she's bound to the witch night singer and so she has to do everything that he says and he says go and infiltrate the palace so the last few books from my TBR cart, here we have The Last Legacy by Adrian Young, which I was so excited because the publishers actually sent this to me. Um, I read Fable and Namesake earlier this year, you will see them later on in this video, and I loved it. Um, it was just like such a perfect pirate adventure, and this is the spinoff to that, and this follows um, the Roth family, which are like the jeweler family, and they're like super ruthless, and this girl kind of like doesn't want to be a part of them anymore. Then we have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviard. I really want to get to this one because I love Victoria Aviard. I follow her on social media and just like enjoy her presence. But also Red Queen was like the series that got me back into reading YA. So I will always appreciate her for that. And I need to read this. And then I do not read a lot of adult literary fiction like at all. But I read All the Light We Cannot See when it first came out like a while ago because it was reading like winning all that awards and Cloud Cuckoo Land recently came out by Anthony DeWare and like it just sounds like one of those books like you really want to sink your teeth into and like it will take you a long time to read but like you will love the process and we follow three different timelines one in Istanbul in the 1500s um no sorry Constantinople in the 1500s 1300s um in a library in Idaho and then in the future um and like somehow their stories like all connect like through stories and i just like love books like this that are kind of like i don't know like they'll make you think so gotta get to this one soon okay so that was it for my tbr cart <laughs> we still have a long way to go i really really feel like i should stop buying books and read the ones that i have it's a problem all right so i decided i wanted to start a colorful rom-com shelf of all my favorite rom-coms romances with the deceiving cartoon covers so that's what we're gonna go through next i was sent the dating plan by sarah desai and this is about fake fiancés love the lilac color then i bought the brown sister trilogy because everyone has been raving about it and i have so far read get a life chloe brown and this is about a chronically ill girl and she basically falls in love with her grumpy landlord and it's beautiful and wonderful um and then these books follow her sisters so this one i think is the next one take a hint danny brown she like is into academics and stuff because she's like in her phd and basically likes a fake like moment goes viral between zeff and danny and they are gonna play along with it and then we have actor age eve brown which falls the youngest brown sister and she is kind of like helping this guy she like accidentally broke his arm and now she's gonna help him run his bed and breakfast so i really want to get to these other two in the series because i adore get a life chloe brown like it was just so cute then i bought the chris quotient by helen huang and this, this is about a girl who has asperger's um so she doesn't really know anything about love so she desires to hire an escort to teach her the ways of love making and things off school then in the follow up the bride test we follow esme who basically like 
lives in Ho Chi Minh City and she gets a chance to marry an American and so she goes to America. Uh, and then there is the, there's another one in the series that I haven't gone to yet, but I want to read these ones because I'm all about rom-coms. Then I have all of these books by Tessa Bailey because I love her. So first up, we have Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, which I read in 2019. One of like the first smutty books that I read and I'm like, wow, I love smut. <laughs> um, so I picked up this next two in the series because I haven't read them yet. And so we have Love Her or Lose Her and Tools of Engagement. Also this series, the Hot and Hammer series takes place in Port Jeff on Long Island, which is very close to where I am from. So I love that as well. Um, and it follows like this home improvement company. So this one is about a marriage in trouble and it's like their second chance at like fixing the relationship. And then this one is about Bethany who's like type A and then like there's this cowboy dude that comes and he's like younger and they like don't really like each other but they're forced to work together. And Fixer Up follows Georgie who's a birthday clown and an ex MLB player and it works to perfection. Yeah. We have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, which like one of my favorite rom-coms of the year. We have Piper, who is like this socialite and basically like her life is going off the rails and when she ends up in jail, her stepdad is like, you're cut off. So she goes back with her sister to this town that their father is from, their deceased father is from, and they have to like revive his old bar. And then it's like this through and through fishing bar and she meets this girl fisherman named Brendan. And he does not like her because she's this like socialite. Whew, this book, spicy. Oh my God, I've acquired so many books this year. Okay, so this next book, Better Together by uh, Christine Riccio is her newest one, and this is about twins, Jamie and Siri, and um, I read this one. It was sent to me by the publisher, and I just thought it was, like, super cute. It's, like, Parent Trap Meets Freaky Friday. And we have Neon Gods by my queen, Katie Robert. I love Katie Robert. This is the beginning of her Dark Olympus series, and it's Hades and Persephone, and it's amazing. Okay, then this book, I actually went on a Goodreads giveaway and it just arrived and I'm like, I guess the publisher sent me an ARC even though I didn't request it. I went on a Goodreads giveaway. Second time I've actually ever won a Goodreads giveaway. Hang the Moon by Alexandra Bella Flora and I believe one of the characters in here is a bi. Um, and it's an own voices book because the author herself is also LGBTQ+. Plus. So, okay, so Brendan loves love and he created an app to like help people find love and Annie is like a spur of the moment kind of a gal. She doesn't really believe in love and she is his childhood crush. So when she's back in town, he's like, I'm gonna like take you through all of the moments of like a cheesy rom-com movie. Yes, and this is the second in the series. The first one is Rain of the Stars, which is a sapphic romance. Then this book, probably my favorite rom-com of the year, The Love Hypothesis. Yes, it is based on Raylo fan fiction, but like I love it. It is about a grumpy associate professor, Adam Carlson, and he is fake dating Olive Smith, a third year PhD candidate student, and like it's grumpy sunshine. It's just like academic. It's like there's pipette humor. What more could a girl want? What more could a scientist want that reads smut? A scientist that reads smut. What more could she want? She wants this book. I'm overwhelmed. There's, there's no order to the chaos, just stay along for the ride. I acquired an arc of Chain of Iron. No, Simonteen did not send this to me, but I had the first one from ALA, and when my friend Chanel like knows how crazy I am about this one, and I have the first one in an arc, she's like, I got a copy, I don't really like Shadowhunters, I'll send it to you, and I was like, I literally will love you forever. So Chanel, if you're watching this, like you're my queen. Um, this is like a prized possession of mine. My other copy of Chain of Iron is like up here. Let's just like zoom in on it because I don't feel like getting it out of the bottom of the pile. Oh, I can't even really see it. Do do do. There it is. Now you know that it's there. Oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. The Waterstones edition, which I've been collecting all the Waterstone ones. Even though I will never have Lady Midnight, that's so sad. But yeah, I love these editions. Which, speaking of, I have this box set I have not yet put on my shelves, but this is the Illumicrate Infernal Devices set. Um, uh, it's kind of like in the style of the 10th anniversary editions, um, but not quite. Oh, goodness me. I took them out. Here we go. Clockwork Angel. And then this is the sprayed edge side. Clockwork Prince. I love the blue. This is the back. 
and Clockwork Princess, which I love the violin detail on the cover. And, and each one has a quote on the back. So Clockwork Angel says, this is your true self, Tessa. This is the power of who you are. Clockwork Princess, we live and breathe words. And Clockwork Princess says, in your eyes alone, I found grace. Beautiful. So next I have The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jeffrey L. Armitrout. I've been doing the whole series on my channel since last year, reading all of JLA's books. I'm hopefully gonna have more soon. So this is the book when it came out, right away it came out in like March, April-ish, May-ish. Loved it, obviously. I'm a sucker for the Front Blood Nash series. I read an arc of this book, Defy the Night, and I loved it so much. I had to get the Barnes Noble exclusive, which has special content. And look at these end pages. Oh, so pretty. And this is about a kingdom where this girl, Tessa, is stealing uh, moonflower petals from the rich and distributing them to the poor because there's this play going around and you need to take the moonflower petals to, like, stave off the plague. But, like, if... Obviously, like, the distribution system is basically, like, all messed up. So she partners with her best friend, Wes, and they go and steal these petals and distribute them to the poor but when the unthinkable happens she basically marches into the palace to try and face this injustice head on um facing down the king and the king's justice um who are just young men that are trying to rule once their parents have passed but they're they're doing it with a little bit of a firm hand and so tessa's gonna see things straight herself um and she realizes that maybe like is it even possible to fix this kingdom without destroying it first i love this so much that I was like, I really need to continue on with the Curse of Blood Nash series. So I picked up A Heart So Fierce and Broken because I had read it, loved it, um, but I read an arc and I just never got around to finish up a finished copy. So I bought this one and then I also bought A Vow So Bold and Deadly and I finished out the trilogy. This was a really good trilogy. A Curse of Dark and Lonely starts off as a Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, but the, the second one follows like the storyline of a secondary character in the first book and then like all four of these characters are like a focus in this last one so i felt like it tied everything up very nicely and uh yeah i'm a fan of bridget kemener's fantasy series and i feel like because she comes from like writing a content um like background i feel like it makes like the romantic tension and stuff really good in her series oh goodness me okay now we have these hollow vows by lexi ryan i bought it because this is like supposed to be like an Akatar taught like upper YA fantasy series um that's really all you need to say to me and I will buy it so yeah it's about this girl she goes into like the Feylands. lands she's caught in between these two male love interests and that's it I do want to read this soon because it just sounds like everything I love then I read The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross um in like august or something like that this is one of maddie's favorite books and it's about like you have a passion um and like this girl basically didn't like master her passion so she can get a patron but then this like disgraced lord comes and offers to be her patron and she gets um like swept up into this plot to like put a queen on the throne of a majoring kingdom and i really enjoyed this because it like was not the chosen one trope it was like the adjacent to the chosen one trope so we really got to see like the people that like support the chosen one um i thought it was cool reading from that perspective and with that being said i also have queen's resistance which is the sequel to the queen queen's rising so this one like wrapped up pretty nicely but i think this one's gonna go over like now what happens in this kingdom after the events of the first one um and yeah I really enjoy Rebecca Ross's writing and I want to like get into more of her works. She also has the Sisters of Sword and Song, which is a sister fantasy, and then Dreams Lie Beneath that just came out, which spoiler alert, it's gonna be later in my haul. Honestly, while I'm here, I need to do like a lot of dusting while I'm going over my shelves because they have not been dusted in a while. Do you dust your shelves? And if you do, like how often do you do it? Because I feel like I'm definitely not doing it often enough. There's just dirt. Okay, so now we're going down to this shelf over here. So the one thing that I want to pull out that I got is A Torch Against the Night by Sabah Tahir. But do you see this? This is the new cover in hardcover because they finally printed a hardcover dust jacket that matches the rest of the series. So now I have all four in the matching covers, which is like literally 
what I've wanted my whole life. Um, the fans have been begging for it and Penguin Razor Bill, they delivered, so thank you. The next book that I have here is Six Crins and Cranes in both editions. So I read it in this edition, which is the US edition. This is about Shuri, who is cursed. Um, she's like walking around with this bowl on her head. It makes sense in the context of the story. So she's cursed by her stepmother and her brothers are turned into cranes because basically she has forbidden magic and she shows that she has forbidden magic. So she's cursed and she has, if she utters a word, one of her brothers will die. So she is mute and she goes on a journey to find her brothers and end the curse. And then this is the UK edition. Like normally I don't always like buy the US and the UK edition, but I love this one. I'm like, okay, well now I need the UK edition because literally how gorgeous is it? So yes. I did miss out on the fairy loot sale, which I really love the addition of that one. Um, but like, I feel like this is enough to satisfy me. There's just so many uh, exclusive editions in the world. So here are some other YAs that I read this year. We have Crier's War by Nina Varela. And this is about an automata automaton and a human. And basically like, the automatons have taken over, but this automaton falls in love with a human girl and it's sapphic and beautiful. And then I also read Quark. Cryer's War, which is the sequel to that. So this is a lovely sapphic sci-fi fantasy duology. Then I have Namesake, which I mentioned earlier in this video that I read Fable and Namesake this year. Perfect party adventure. We follow Fable, who's basically abandoned on this island by her father that's a pirate. And she has to learn to survive. Um, I don't have Fable because Maddie's sending it to me eventually. We have Monstrous Volume 6. I just got this. I have been keeping up with Monstrous. I haven't read the last few volumes, but I've read like the first few. So I need to like, I think I should just do like a reread of the whole series at this point, but this is like my favorite graphic novel series. It is steampunk automaton. Like there is like a war going on between these two species and like the art styles, like art deco and just like absolutely gorgeous. And I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. So like, I really want to sit down with like all the volumes and like give them the proper time that they deserve because this series is just like so absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I think, I don't know when I picked this up, but I did finally get Five Dark Fates, which is the last in the Four Dark Crown series because I haven't read it yet and I read the whole rest of the series and I really like the series. So I want to obviously read the last one. Trisha Levenseller is one of my favorite authors. That's why her books are right here in the front and center. We have Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. I'm losing my mind at this point. Um, and this follows Ziva, who has social anxiety and she is a swordsmith. Um, but she has like the power to imbue her weapons with like magical gifts. And so she accidentally creates like a weapon of mass destruction and gives it to this warlord that wants to take over the world. So basically she takes the sword and runs before she gives it to the warlord. And now her and her sister are off on this journey and they are joined by two men, a mercenary and a scholar. And I loved it. Like social anxiety definitely features like really prominently in this as well as sisterly relationships and like I just adored it because I adore everything with Trisha Levin Seller. Also, side note, The Shadows Between Us, which is probably my favorite book by her, is getting a follow-up novel following Alessandra's sister. So like, I can't wait. Okay, then the other books I have on here, we have The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin, which was an unexpected favorite of mine this year. Um, I read it on a whim because I got a finished copy from the publisher, Unsolicited. Uh, look at that gorgeous heart and naked cover. cover. Um, and we follow Clara, who has the power of all four seasons within her. And because she's an ever witch, like she needs to harness her power, but she has a really hard time controlling her powers because her powers got her friend killed. Um, and so she works with this boy to kind of harness her powers and like, it's just so sweet. And like, it really um, is about like coming into yourself and like, I don't know, it was just amazing and like beautiful. And it's definitely a fantasy that like kind of veers more towards like the contemporary type feelings, but like, I don't know, I just loved it so much. Then we have another witchy book, which is Sweet and Bitter Magic. We follow Ren and... Okay, so I read The Storm Crow a few years ago and I was sent the sequel, The Crow Rider by Kaylin Josephson, like as an add-on to an ARC package that I got from Sourcebooks. So I have this now. I thought that the first book in the series like did really well dealing with like a depression in a fantasy setting after like something terrible happens and it has to do with animal familiars. So I loved it. I want to read the sequel soon. That I, you know, read the books on my shelves. Next, we have Luminous by Mar Rutherford. I read Crown of Coral and Pearl by her. Loved it. Need to read the sequel still, but um, I really want to read this one because it has to deal with star magic. 
and like I love anything celestial. So yes, I just, this cover called to me and I'm like, I need to purchase this. Okay, so now we have Gods and Monsters by Shelby Marin, which is the final book in the Serpent and Dove series, which I've been reading ever since it first came out. And I read this one this year and it broke my heart. Many tabs. Um, yeah, I'm sad that the series is over, but I did really adore it. Here we have A Court of Silver Flames. This is my copy that I annotated, the main like cover that came with it. And then I also got a copy of the tour version um, because like the tour was virtual. So this is what it looks like and this is the side. Um, I do really enjoy having like at least one special edition of the Sarah J Mass book. So hopefully for the next ones, I can get something cool too. Okay, and these guys I've been keeping like randomly on my shelves. They don't even really fit there, but they are special editions from the bookish box of From Blood and Ash. So, From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, A Crown of Gilded Bones. These editions are beautiful. I love Mono Lime Art who did the covers, which is why I decided to go with the bookish box ones. Um, and I'll be picking up A War of Two Queens when it comes out. And I just like, for my favorite series, love having like a really cool special edition. So that concludes everything from my shelves. Now let's move on my table. I Let me just show you guys real quick. Like literally everything in my life is a gigantic mess. So this is my table right now. I'm just in piles of books. So we're gonna haul them. And then that should be the last of what I need to get <laughs> I'm I bought so many books this year. I need to go through them. That's why an unhaul is coming in next, but okay. Here we have She Who Became the Sun by Shelby Parker Chan. Um I know that this is a like highly anticipated adult fantasy that just came out. This is like the original cover. Um I got this one in an unplugged book box. Then we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim because I love Six Crimson Cranes by her so much. I needed to pick up her other series. Tokyo Ghoul number one because I wanted to start this manga series because it just seems like a classic. Uh, this one was in my birthday haul and this one I bought in 2020. So I can just put this back on my shelf. I don't know why it was in that pile. Okay. Okay. Kingdom of the Curse by Karen Maniscalco. Follow up to Kingdom of the Wicked um, follows an Italian witch and she accidentally summons like the devil. So literally one of my favorite books of the year. A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. We have this pretty Owl Crate version. I got Owl Crate for a few months. Um, I decided to stop just because it was expensive and I didn't need to be spending that money, but it's pretty. Jade of Fire Gold by June Seal Tan. Basically um, someone pitched this as like a Zutara type book. That's all I needed to hear. Um, Kingdom of the Curse, Carrie Maniscalco, go Barnes and Noble edition because we have like the white books from there and so I'm collecting those. Um, and Lake Sedge by Lyndall Clipstone. This is the Owl Crate edition. I, think I read this book in October and really liked it. Um, I read it in the regular copy though. Not this one. Oh, this is the art that came with it. Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff because everyone was talking about it and I really want to read it and it's filled with art by Monolime Art. So, yes. Um... Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So this is the pre-order dust jacket that I got, but if you take it off, I just have like the regular dust jacket underneath because I wasn't gonna buy like a whole other book for the special dust jacket, but I do really like this one. Then I have the Barnes & Noble edition of Once Upon a Broken Heart that is in rose gold, and it's really pretty underneath. Oh, very gorgeous. Then here we have The Invisible Life of Adela Rue by V.E. Schwab, literally one of my favorites. Um, and this is the like one year special edition. Um, I also have the red one somewhere, you'll see it later. Then I have The Wheel of Time by uh, Robert Jordan, which is book one in the book Eye of the World. And this is like a well-known, beloved fantasy series of like, just super well known um, and I wanted to read it because the TV show is coming out. And I also have book zero because I packed in Barnes and Noble and I'm like, do I need to read this one first? Turns out like it makes more sense to read this one like after you've read a few of the other ones. So I'll go back and read this one eventually, but um, I bought both of them because I was like stressed. Okay, here we are. Here is the red version of The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue. And this is 
the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith, which like um, I've been reading this webcomic for like three years and it's a Hades and Persephone retelling and like it just handles so many topics really well and I'm in love with it and I'm so excited to be like holding it physically and I just love this with my whole heart. I have an arc of all of his villains by Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herman. I'm actually going to a signing for this this week. Very excited about that one. Um, it's like if it says you fell in love with the victors of the Hunger Games, now prepare to meet the villains of the Blood Veil. Very excited. Um, this is on my November TBR. Also, my November TBR is Vesper Team by Margaret Rogerson. We follow a nun who like awakens an evil spirit attached to like the saint's relic. And I love Margaret Rogerson, one of my autobi authors. And then of course we have A Shadow in the Empire by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is the prequel series to From Blood and Ash, It Falls Nikitos, the god, and his lover slash consort. Um, I realize all these are in my November TBR because I picked up my November TBR pile. <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul Volume 2, so I continue on with the series. The white version of The Invisible Life of Abby LaRue. Um, this is the UK one, but like sprayed edges. Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, which is like a rumpled stiltskin like type retelling and it's horror about this like small town and these monsters that are haunting the small town. Then we have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. As you know, I love Tessa Bailey. This is her Christmas um, romance rom-com and it's like reverse Grumpy X Sunshine. So yes. Then I have The Faceless Hawk by Margaret Owen. I got an arc of this and never picked up a finished copy, but I love Margaret Owen and I wanted to have this. This is about like this plague that is taking over the land and Fi, who is like this funky little girl who goes and like captures the plague and it has to do with the caste system. I'm literally losing my mind at this point. Then we have her new one, The Little Thieves. Um, and this is a goose girl retelling, but from the perspective of the villain, which I love. Okay, so we have Lake's Edge again, which follows Letta as she goes to this manor where like Rowan is rumored to have drowned his entire family and she finds out that he is bound to the Lord Hunter. Lo read this in October, loved it, gave it five stars, mini tabs. Uh, Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross, which I alluded to this book earlier. I just absolutely love this cover and it has to do with dream magic. And the main character's name is Clementine, which I just love that name. And then I have another Amanda Lovelace book, Flower Crowns and Fearsome Things. And um, I just saw this in Target. I'm like, wow, I need this because like, the art. I just feel like it's going to be an emotional experience reading this book. And then the last three books in this haul are literally my new obsession that I was reading them on my Kindle and I'm like, I need to buy these physically. Um, and that is Zodiac Academy by Kyla Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. And we have these twins that are born under a Gemini. They have, they're living in the human world. Like they were raised in foster care, just like going from place to place. And they basically, this guy comes to them and he's like, you guys are fae, you need to come to this land. And they go to the Zodiac Academy and it's like a ruthless fae because everything is a power struggle and they have all four elements, which is basically unheard of. And they are the heirs to the throne. But there are people that like took over since their father died and it's a power struggle essentially. So we have Zodiac Academy, one, The Awakening, two, Ruthless Fae, which I'm currently reading. And three, The Reckoning. I think there's gonna be like eight books in the series total. If you don't see me until the end of November, it's because I'm reading this book, like the series. Like, I'm trash for it. I'm addicted. I'm gonna start a cult dedicated to the Zodiac Academy series. I love it. Okay, so those are the books that I bought in 2021, minus the books I got for my birthday. I need to go reevaluate my entire life. See you later. <laughs> In all seriousness, um, let me know what books you saw on this haul that you want to read, that you have read and loved, um, just like any general thoughts on anything. If you've made it this far, comment a book stack emoji because like, I mean, it's a book haul. I'm just looking at all the books on the floor and I'm like, is this what my life is coming to? I am a book collector though, so like I'm buying these books makes me happy. Um, but like, yeah, there is going to be a decent amount of reorganization in my future. So please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. I would love it if you subscribe to like hang around and watch my videos, you know? So with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.